Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. My name is Brian Moss. We have uh, Aki Yanagi uh, sitting in doing the translation and uh, Hi guys. in front in front of the hot lights, Yutaka Minoa, principal key animator for Ninja Scroll, the character designer of Ninja Scroll. Not exactly a Madhouse employee, but has been working for Madhouse for quite a long time. Thank you so much, yeah. Yutaka, for coming yeah, through. Sorry about the one of uh, the th when we first hung out, mm -hmm. I released a cover mm -hmm. for Fantastic Four where I drew the thing. Yes, yes. in in a pose like uh, Dark Knight Returns. Returns. Yeah, and uh, then you said that the thing mm -hmm. is a character that you like a whole lot, mm -hmm. and it made me think of Ninja Scroll because the first Devil of Kimun mm -hmm. is the big rock guy. Mm -hmm. So uh, I do wonder about. American comic book uh, influence. Uh, are there any names that you could name? So this is a very basic part that we need. Uh, with everybody needs to know. But all the characters are based on the idea of the director Kawajiri san. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean that you know like it was his idea to make like Tessai the uh, very first uh, devil to become a rock. It was the director's idea. I so all, so that is for all the characters. So yeah, yeah. so for the characters for the ninja school there were no like influence from you know him. It's right. more like based on Kawajiri san's character designs or character settings and based on that he did like just the design. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so in in other research, uh, I I seen uh, over a number of articles and things. It described that uh, you're not exactly an employee of Madhouse, but you've been on loan to Madhouse, and I wonder what that means. Uh, <laughs> Actually, he is a part of a studio called Takuranke, mm -hmm. and he was an employee for that studio. And then he was a kind of, not rent is like the word, right word, but he was like uh, working for Madhouse from Takuranke. And then usually he had a, a contract for not a monthly payment, but more like a, a paycheck for the whole animation film, right. which is not the best way to do a contract, he says. But so he so he's actually a part of another studio, I and see. that studio had a contract with Madhouse, and right. so that studio Takaranke would let uh, Minoa-san use for Madhouse's animation uh, any film or any, like TV series. That's how it worked. Okay, that makes so much sense mm -hmm. too. Like the idea of you take money for the entire film mm -hmm. because. Maybe on paper, mm -hmm. the film is supposed to take 14 months, mm -hmm. but when you start to get busy doing the work, it's 20 months, mm -hmm. and uh, you know you're still getting the same pay. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I see, I see how that could be uh, disadvantageous. Mm -hmm. Back to the Ninja Scroll stuff, mm -hmm. first, real quick. So, so the director comes up with the character designs, mm -hmm. and I wonder, you know, y Yutaka is is uh, credited as, as character mm -hmm. designer. Mm -hmm. So what did he receive? Was it was it notes or were there actual art pieces or sketches that he initially worked from? So actually, uh, some people may know about Mr. Kawajiri, Kawajiri, the director Kawajiri is also a famous animator. Of course. So he can draw by himself. So actually there was actually a rough sketch of the characters. And so he he used that rough sketches and they added his own you know elements or like made it brush up and stuff like that to become a character. That, but uh, this was Minoa-san's first time to work with Kawajiri-san. Right. So Kawajiri-san didn't know who will be the character at that point. So you know it, it wasn't the character rough design by Kawajiri-san was not made for Minoa-san, but of course just anonymous somebody that will be the character designer. So that that is an interesting thing when looking at. Uh, Yutaka's mm -hmm. uh, filmography mm -hmm. because it seems like he gets in mm -hmm. with the director mm -hmm. and then more and more responsibilities mm -hmm. get he gets trusted with more and more mm -hmm. responsibility mm -hmm. uh, so like uh, for Animatrix mm -hmm. I was reading that 
uh, you know, he was first commissioned to do mm -hmm. some light work, mm -hmm. and then he got more and more and more responsibilities mm -hmm. along the way. So mm -hmm. that suggests that uh, that uh, the director mm -hmm. uh, has a lot of faith in him. Um, I think, yeah, he's thankful that he thinks that Kawajiri san has faith in him and just very, you know, appreciate it. He appreciates that very much. But uh, also, uh, I think after Ninja School, they worked together on Vampire Hunter D. Of course. <laughs> but Vampire No, but Vampire Hunter D. Um, um, it was based on a, a novel of that course. was already published. So yeah. it's, somebody had their own ideas. Of course, Kajiri san had his own idea of character design. And he also had his own, you know, like ideas that he could pitch, and that kind of came together. So it was not just more like faith, but it was kind of like you know, like a collaboration work that kind of worked out. And if we talk about Animatrix as well, um, uh, actually Kajiri san was pitched from the Wachowskis with, of course. with the script, but he turned that down. He completely deleted that yeah. and didn't use it and he came up with two scripts and one I think was Lana and the other one was called Jedi which I think uh, uh, Minosan worked on but it was kind of like you know again they didn't have anyone in mind to work on that mm -hmm. so but then he came to Minosan and then uh, the more they worked the more responsibility he had to do mm -hmm. so it was more like a flow right. it was not just about the relationship but he kind of while he will while they worked together the, you know, the responsibilities were added on because of the flow of the work. So yeah, that's how it was described mm, yes, online. Yes. That, that that Hi. Uh, when Mr. Kawajiri works, he has his own group of people, the Kawajiri team kind of thing. So whenever somebody comes up or he comes up with like a storyboard or like a script, he's had the flexible mind and he asks to everybody in the team. So even if you, you're, if you're like a rookie or very young, uh, you know, like a beginner in the industry, he still listens and have a beer to anyone. Yeah. So he always has like the mind yeah. to like drain in any kind of ideas, right. which he thinks is worth the best. Worst best. So that's why kind of like, you know, like Minosan san was also, you know, working together and, Kajiri sounds flexible to, you know, induct uh, Minoa-san's ideas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's basically what I what I read online. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it said that uh, that uh, you talk up uh, create a, like one piece, mm -hmm. and then based on that one piece, they went into a different direction mm -hmm. for uh, Animatrix. So that's what I the, the story that was uh, behind it is that when Kajiri-san came up with the script, uh, after reading a script, script Minoa-san made some like image illustration for that, and right. that was like the beginning of the whole, you know, like a, a process. Right. The beginning. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, the right. so based on that image illustration, you know, they didn't have the character design or anything, but there's, you know, like when you draw an image illustration, there's already a character inside, so. That kind of influence caught Jisan, and so they when they went back and forth, you know, uh, you know, he got he Ka Ji -san came up with some with some ideas, and they kind of like pitched, you know, back and forth, and at the end, he became the you know, like Mino Asami became the character designer. Right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so what I'm curious about is some of the early influences. I think the American audience would really appreciate this. Is um, there's a connection to the work with like a superhero mm -hmm. feel to it, mm -hmm. and what I'm curious about is the er, is there any early American comics that he was into when he was a kid, mm -hmm. or that there's a connection with, or and what was that discovery? Was it like in a store with like floppies? Mm -hmm. Was it through television and movies, or was that a later mm -hmm. influence with mm -hmm. like the superheroes and the American stuff? Mm, so actually his biggest influence is the Japanese director Osamu Dezaki and he's the director of uh, Ashita no Jo's uh, movie version mm -hmm. and also he's uh, uh, very famous for the uh, movie uh, Treasure Island Takarajima and Captain Silver is one of his biggest influences 
in that transparency movie, but you know, back in those days, they were like in the 70s, the animation movies were made more for adults, and so they look cool as a kid for him. And uh, if it comes to American comics, in the 70s, late 70s, there was the smaller size American comics translated into Japanese. I think it was Jack Kirby's stories of Fantastic Four that he bought and that he loved a lot. And uh, especially his hero is, again, the thing. Right. And he's also a big fan of Doctor Doom. Mm -hmm. いや、あと、まあ、実写で言ったら、あの、もちろん特撮とかは好きだったんですけど、どちらかっていうと、I think another influence is that uh, in Japan back in the days, maybe like in the 70s, uh, a lot of Hollywood movies were on TV. Like every night there was like a 2-hour slot that you can watch in uh Japanese over the all of the films, right? And I think he thinks that that is one of the biggest influence for him because he was watching a lot of Hollywood movies every mm -hmm. night, and uh, also um, uh, he knows that you know, like Ninja Scroll is said that you know it might be the art style might be influenced by American comics or like American character designs, but maybe um, uh, he thinks that before uh, Ninja Scroll, Kajiri san worked on a movie called Wicked City, of course, yeah, mm -hmm. and then that. My, I mean, not, not. I mean, he thinks that you know, Kajigi san has in mind to make those characters a little bit more American style or American comic book art style, especially with the shadows of how it was put on. Mm -hmm. So he he thinks that he sure has something in mind for the film to look like a little bit of American comic style art style. And then this is like the after uh, the Ninja Scrolls after that. So that's why maybe you know there's like a, a point at for the art to look a little bit like, you know, uh, American comic book style with a lot of shadows, you know, and uh, some effects. For him, he is, well, the way he draws is more like he was affected by Ashton Joe and the art style of that, so he's our style is more in the line from that and get affected more from those kind of movies like the Dezaki movies what we call. Yeah. And so and especially around the time when he was making Ninja Scroll, he was collecting Sinkevich and Mike Mignola. But that was just as a hobby. Of and those art style, as you can see, has never affected the work. Right. So right. it was very separated. So at least for him, for his work, there was no Effect or you know, like uh, influence for American comics. I get it. I get work wise. It. So so when he's talking about uh, the, the Hollywood movies mm -hmm. being influenced, mm -hmm. are we talking compositions mm -hmm. and camera angles mm -hmm. and storytelling? Mm -hmm. Because obviously that's moving pictures. That's mm -hmm. that's live action. It's mm -hmm. not drawing. So this is <laughs> he says he's a very stupid guy, and so he likes, he appreciates very simple, you know, like, he appreciates Hollywood movies in a simple way. So, his, ultimately, he thinks that if the story is good, nothing matters. And so, he thinks that, you know, the when he watches the store, uh, movies, he always, you know, is impressed by the stories. I see. And also, to drive the story, you need a character. So, the characters are really, you know, like, uh, has a very characteristic that's very strong, that impresses people. So, those two elements are, like, the biggest part of watching a lot of Hollywood movies. And ultimately, also, he thinks that if the story is good, the art doesn't matter. The picture doesn't matter. And he thinks he's one of the not so good artist in the animation industry, which I told him that if that if somebody listens to this, like hundred people's gonna cut their you know arms, <laughs> right? Them. So including us, yes. right? <laughs> but a, a, but a, anyway, so it's just about the stories, okay. and of course he's watched like not just how the movies, the Japanese movies, a lot of movies. Of course. So maybe he soaked a lot of it into it. So when he outputs maybe there's some influences but not anything directly so it's more like you know how the Hollywood movies are really fun to watch well made as in story ways and right. you know, if the story is not good 
then it's even if even if the art is bad, if the story is good, even that still makes a good movie. So it, or animation. So you know. So the biggest influence from movies, especially Hollywood movies, is about the story. And you know, he's getting impressed by like how they compose this, or how they would show this, or how violent they could do in right. our movies. So a lot of things are really you know just about how you know good the story is. I get it. So, uh, but behind mm -hmm. your back, mm -hmm. you've got an image of Jubei. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is like me being a, a defense attorney with mm -hmm. a guy in the witness box, because mm -hmm. this is a two-part question, mm -hmm. and I'm going to get the, the first answer first. Mm -hmm. So, whose dominant drawing style are we looking at there? Mm -hmm. Kawajiri or Yutaka? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So basically, it's based on Kajiri san's design. So, at a, at, as a full, you know, it's more of a Kajiri, the Kawajiri part is very strong. But from part to part or like cut to cut, there are scenes or like art that is very, very much Minoa san style. So, there are some nuances in the art that's very strong from uh, Minoa san. Okay. So if you look at other Kajiri-san's films, oh, yeah. filmography, uh, the style of his is deduction. He's tried to deduct as much as possible and make it simple as possible. Mm -hmm. And so it's more like simplicity with art style or the film style. But Minoa-san's art style is more of adding. So he wants to draw and add more details, add more styles. But right now, I mean, you know, right now it's really hard to say, but he's re re regretting that. Who's regretting what? Minoa san's regretting what he did with Jubei or mm -hmm. how I find, he drew. I find, I find that, uh, that, you know, m many artists, that, like, everybody wants to re-edit their work and mm -hmm. things like that. And certainly visiting out here, mm -hmm. there is a lot of humble attitude mm -hmm. out here. And I was expecting him to say, mm -hmm. It was Kawajiri's mm -hmm. style, mm -hmm. which the second part of what I was going to say was mm -hmm. I've seen Kawajiri's work mm -hmm. when it's not with Yutaka, mm -hmm. and certainly Ninja Scroll, mm -hmm. Vampire Hunter D, mm -hmm. Bloodline, mm -hmm. the Animatrix, mm -hmm. anything that Yutaka has hands in, mm -hmm. it looks different than all the rest, mm -hmm. which tells me mm -hmm. that we're seeing a lot of Yutaka mm -hmm. on the screen, mm -hmm. more, 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 maybe more than he admits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> あの、その、the word regret is something that um, this, this is going to take a little long to explain. But uh, as a film for the ninja school, he satisfies what it looks like. Yeah. And, uh, but if, if it wasn't with him, and if it was done by Kajiri san, it might have had a different look. Right. And that could be something different. Right. That's kind of like the part that he regrets about. But he himself, as a, the animator and as a professional, he satisfies with you know what Ninja Scroll looks like, or Vampire Hunter D looks like, or the animatory looks like. Right. But and he also he's also satisfied. He had the chance to look at, I mean, watch Ninja Scroll again because he started streaming. Right. And in some parts, like oh, I did a good job on this, you know, like facial expression. And yeah. This cut. And I want to ask some of those questions, mm -hmm. but keep going. Mm -hmm. But still, you know, what if he wasn't involved? And, you know, like that's kind of like the regret part. I get it. Yeah. 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 B Moss, you got something? Yeah. So <clears throat> we have back in America, when you talk about the old um, VHS era of anime, you got Vampire Hunter D, Ninja Scroll, Akira. Those are like, you'll find them everywhere, very pervasive. So going into working on uh, Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust, was there any concerns or any apprehension or expectations because of the original having such a big impact? I don't know the impact here per se, mm -hmm. but 
um, in America, that movie's a big deal, Bloodlust. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to the process in general and the expectations from how successful the original was to mm -hmm. the new one. Honestly, they, he didn't think anything about the uh, influence from the America because of, uh, the bloodlust was indeed uh, invested also by an American company. Mm -hmm. But for the people who worked on the films, were all Japanese and right. just working at a Japanese studio. So they didn't think about if there were any kind of a, you know, effect or mm -hmm. influence or any kind of you know, words from the American people or the American industry on the film. So they were working, you know, like as a normal Japanese animation film when they were working on it. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, there was a little story that when they were working on the storyboard, the American side has asked, like, why has D has this face on his left hand? <laughs> You know, but if like they didn't see the original, yeah, see the original. Or, you know, like if and mo most of the Japanese people know vampire has even from the novels, so that's the essential part of, of course, right? Yeah. But if they, they explained that, so now that was mm -hmm. solved. But you know, at the storyboard, uh, you know, some people has asked for that to take it off or so whatever they said. I don't, I'm not sure, but so that was solved. But then other than that, there weren't mm -hmm. anything really, you know, like big that influenced the making of the film or anything. The videos are brought to you by the books that we make, and 2023 was and is a big year. 2024 is going to be just the same. The Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is out there. About 75% of this print run has uh, been accounted for, so you guys have about 25% left of our, our stock to go. Scoop up that book if you see it. It's going to make an excellent gift. The X-Men Grand Design Trilogy comes out uh, November 14th. It collects all of my X-Men Grand Design works inside of one nice, handy, uh, soft cover. Scoop that up. There are three volumes of Red Room that are uh, completed. Two of them are out on the stands right now, the Antisocial Network and Trigger Warnings. But coming to you in early 2024 is Red Room Crypto Killers with dozens of pages of extra features and commentary in the back. Street Angel Princess of Poverty is coming to you at the end of November. Uh, it is a companion piece to Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive. Uh, you get both of these books. You have all of Jimmy's uh, Street Angel comics to date. He's been self-publishing, and here you have True Crime Funnies, the black and white zine, 1986 zine. Go to Jimmy's website. Uh, he might be sold out right at the moment, but uh, you never know. He, he might have fresh stock, depending on when you're watching this video. And uh, Hulk Grand Design is Jimmy's contribution to the Grand Design mythology that we have created for Marvel Comics. Now that we're done paying the bills, let's get back to the video. Right. Yeah. Oh, He understands that there's a lot of fans for the old Call of Duty edition. Uh, but it's it's more like comparing, you know, the very first Gundam and the modern Gundam. Mm -hmm. They're both Gundam, both different. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's just made differently. Yeah. Okay. So, and especially when he was working on it, rather than the fans of the first film, he was, he had more in his mind about the fans of the novel, the original right. novel. Yeah. So he was uh, thinking about those people and trying to, you know, change those people when he was making the film. So there wasn't a lot of, you know, like, effect or mm -hmm. you know like uh, expectation. Explain, expectation for the from the first film fan but when he actually started working on the project itself of vampire jd he actually did pitch to remake the very first novel that came out and that will explain like why he had the left hand right. face and stuff like that but that was kind of turned down and that kind of and so they made the bloodless which was based on the third novel right no, no, and also, you know, like uh, the first movie was more like, you know, helping the princess, more like damsel in distress kind of story. Of but this one, Bloodless more like was more like a road movie. Yeah. So it's totally a different movie. Totally. Mm -hmm. when, when, he's, when he's doing work on, uh, on Vampire Hunter D, 
do you look at Amano's artwork or do you make sure you don't look at Amano's <laughs> artwork when you're coming up with designs? So he does look at Amano San's work. But that's because, you know, it's a character design. Of course. And it has to be based on the the correction in the correctness of the character. So yeah. he looked he piles up all Amano San's art book and look it into it and try to, you know, pull out the elements for the characters of each character that come, appears. Um, you know, his film. Right. And also there was a character called Maya Link, and that was actually based on another villain character that Amazon designed mm -hmm. for another novel of the Bahar T series. But so he had a lot of influence from Amazon's work in a way. That's cool. Yeah, <laughs> 違うルックになっても、アマノさんの香りは漂ってるようにしなきゃいけないっていうのはあるんで。He was like cooking another meal uh, based on, you know, uh, like the main dishes of Amano-san. But then, you know, of course, so every time he draws tea, he always has Amano-san in mind. And he, he, every art that comes out has to have some sort of Amano-san's flavor right. in the art. But he was he also had this back theme that he did, you know, like say, but there was also a manga version of Vampire D, which was kind of like had his in his mind when he was doing the work. So you know, so they were you know like trying to make the right D right. and the characters. Does Yutaka have any recollection of the the way that we discovered mm -hmm. uh, Ninja Scroll in America mm -hmm. was a licensing deal that was made with MTV mm -hmm. and they would play just maybe like a three mm -hmm. second clip mm -hmm. when a Beavis and Butthead would go to commercial mm -hmm. and when it would come back it would play just these like little clips from Ninja Scroll and it would be all the action beats mm -hmm. you know the ninja stars going mm -hmm. through people mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff uh, does he have any sense about how that deal was made and what the reaction was because for us kids growing up seeing that mm -hmm. it was massive mm -hmm. it was the first time I ever went to a comic shop mm -hmm. looking for that film mm -hmm. I the first time I stepped foot into a comic shop wasn't to buy comics. Mm -hmm. I was looking for Ninja Scroll. Mm -hmm. So it had a big impact in the mm -hmm. States, and I wonder if he knew about that. He doesn't, he didn't know nothing about it. Yeah, nothing about that at all. <laughs> and, but he's honored that you, you know, it was his work that you stepped into. <laughs> The first time he recognized that Ninja Scroll was a thing in the United States is when he went to AX in 2000, year 2000. And then he, he was told and he had to, he saw the, all the reactions and everything. And he was very happy about it, but he didn't know it at all until that. And then, honestly speaking, uh, Ninja Scroll was not a successful film in Japan. Right, I heard that. Mm -hmm. So, but, so he goes to the States, uh, sees the reaction to AX and comes back to Japan and does Kawajiri sound like, oh, looks like our film did a good job in the United States. But that's like how also a lot of things got like in a limbo kind of thing afterwards because of that word. That's what he thinks because, you know, now that like, you know, he, he just wanted to say that, oh, Kawajiri saw our work was very, very praised in the United States, but somebody found out and they, okay, let's make this and that. And that, and that. You know, you know that story afterwards. Of course. But so he feels sorry that maybe he, if he didn't say that, you know, maybe that kind of the hassle might not have happened later on. Mm. But uh, anyway, but he, you know, but still you know, he was happy, so he couldn't resist from saying it. Of course. And of, of, of course, he also told them that, you know, you should look into how many films because, you know, or how many videos it was sold because maybe they did not report Kaji some. Right, right. Yeah, no, MTV, the one such a 
か<笑><笑>あの9993年に初めて流れて、うん、それから2年間毎週コミックショップに電話して、うん、いつ入るんだって<笑>それはもう申し訳ないこと言いたいなと思って。No, no, and then on year two, eventually somebody said, Yes, it's coming in next week. And that was my first trip to the comic shop. お前多分ショップでミスター忍者スクロールって呼ばれたんじゃないかな。ヘルトの名前知らない方がダメですよ。いやいや、今はね、今はそうですけど、でも結局、あ、oh. あ、まあ、チャンネルに名前さん、If you never was ninja scroll, you have never been, you, you might have never been here. That's true. You never drew comics, you、right. never. You know,、yeah, you have to become one of the、uh, one of, you know, comic models in the industry.、So. What, what, one of my biggest influences,、mm-hmm. for sure.、Uh, you, talk, you talk about it as a big career.、Mm-hmm. Do, do any of the films <laughs> show off his more natural drawing style?、Uh, we, we interviewed Peter Chung.、Mm-hmm. And I asked him this question、mm-hmm. What's your natural drawing style like?、Mm-hmm. Because Peter Chung created Rugrats and he created Aeon Flux. I didn't know about Rugrats. Yeah. Really? Yeah.、Wow. So I was like, how, what, how do you draw in your sketchbook?、Mm-hmm. What does that look like?、Mm-hmm. He says that his drawing, he doesn't think about drawing that way.、Mm-hmm. It's based on projects.、Mm-hmm. You know, I have this project, I've got to draw like babies. A professional. Exactly,、mm-hmm. a professional mentality. And I wonder if Yutaka has ever expressed. His natural drawing style、mm. in any of his film work?、Mm. And if so, what would that, those projects be? No, no, I can't say that. No, no. I can't say that. 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 Mm-hmm. TV animation he works on. So maybe there's really none that he did with his own art style. Even if he did character designs,、um, it could be close, but not really his art style. And maybe some of the lines that he's been doing is more of Kawajiri san's line. But anyway, he's more of a guy who likes to draw cool looking guys rather than cute girls. So.、Mm-hmm. Maybe you know, he's、uh, more signature, our style is more glad. This is the Instagram, it's his、uh, doodles. Okay, so, <laughs> so just to tell the people at home, you go in m i n o w a Yutaka's Instagram,、yeah. uh, his, his natural drawing style、mm-hmm. is pretty representative there. Right now, he doesn't have his own distinctive art styles.、So. Right. Yeah, that's what a lot of animators say.、Mm-hmm. One of the things that I notice on the Instagram is、uh, when I look at the art, is that it's on animation paper with the aims,、mm-hmm. holes punched into mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Are, are,、uh, are they still doing hand animation out here? Or is that like surplus paper、mm-hmm. from back in the day? うんとデジタルイジってる時間がないから一番なんですけどいやいや流しうんで現状そのアナログで仕事させてもらえてるんでねデジタル環境しかない作品だよってなったら多分それ必要すると思うんですけど今のところはじゃあ書かせ先に関
fusion between CGI and traditional animation. So, Mm. It's more of the background effects, and it's, it. it's not, but it's not CGI as well. Okay. It should be like a drawn, hand painted background yeah. art, and how they filmed it rather than using CGI. So yep. he thinks that it's more like how they filmed it mm -hmm. rather than you know not using CGI and trying to use traditional art animation style to Got express it. the blackgrass. Because mm -hmm. it's um, just beautiful, so it's like mm -hmm. one of those things where it's confusing. So mm -hmm. I think it's good for the audience to know. Um, uh, one question I was curious about mm -hmm. is with uh, Redline, mm -hmm. the animated film. Mm -hmm. It took seven years to make. Mm -hmm. Was that because it was like development hell, or is it because of the detail of the animation, mm -hmm. something like that? So for Redline, it's more like more of a creative thing. And mm -hmm. Mr. Koike, the uh, creator of the Redline, mm -hmm. had a lot of things that he wanted to put into the film, and only he can do it. So those elements had to be done by himself. So that's one of the reasons oh. that took a lot of time. And also, Minoo san tries not to see what the background story is for making the film as mm -hmm. much as possible and he wants to concentrate. But still he heard that, you know, like a lot of the people on the production lines are like telling Korke san to rush as much as possible. But still, you know, he had his own things that he wanted to do in his mind. Like there was a uh, a cut with an alien planet and with a lot mm -hmm. of aliens, but he yep. said that, that should be all direct designed by Korke san. <laughs> But, and he they didn't even make like a like a character design sheet, so some are like drawn directly into it or something. Oh, wow. So those kind of, I don't know the word in English, but he has his own sense of process. design and process mm -hmm. and also like his artistry that he wants to put into the film was one of the reasons that it took longer than a regular film. Okay. No, design like that, but so it's not just the design, but how the character moves, how they put in the shadows, you know, all those small details were all Koike-san style. Got it. I think our audience would kill us if I do not ask the question, uh, there was rumors that there was going to be a Ninja Scroll sequel, what happened? So the biggest part is money. They couldn't collect enough money. But also Madhouse is more like a production company. Right. And they don't, you know, like run around and make money to make a film, but they just get, you know, commissioned uh, by the commission by the bigger companies. company. And also maybe the timing wasn't right. And mm -hmm. also he's just an artist, so there's not much he can say anyway. Because yeah, he just if he was asked to draw, he will draw. Of course. But, you know. Yeah. And we've seen some things. The animation stuff, I mean, it's a very collaborative process. Mm -hmm. uh, Yutaka has admitted that we haven't necessarily seen his complete, like, you know, natural style on, mm -hmm. on screen or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any impulse to do some, some singular work, an um, 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 art book or any, anything like that, kind of by himself without the need for collaboration? Mm, no, no, nothing is on there. So, so there might not be like a, uh, like he won't say no or yes, but uh, right now he, there's not like a big notion to, to, mm -hmm. to want to do something like that. And right. especially his art is not full color. Mm -hmm. So that might be one reason. Also, he might be doing a lot of dueling and collect that into a dojinshi or, you know, like a self-published right. small art book, like yeah. you see. And maybe if he wants to make that again in the future, he might want to, you know, like display the original art and sell that small book together. But uh, I'll take a copy. 
もうそれ出たらぜひ<笑><笑>あとやっぱ判決もだから Mm-hmm. And basically,、mm-hmm. all the work that he's working on is based on other people's properties. It's right. IP, so、exactly. it's not his art fully. So. Yeah, yeah, that's a big frustration in the、mm-hmm. States. Like, like、mm-hmm. uh, so many of us,、uh, you know, we signed what's called the NDA, non disclosure、mm-hmm. agreement. Of course, of course. And、uh, we have so much artwork that we've、mm-hmm. produced that nobody gets to、mm-hmm. see.、Mm-hmm. It's all behind the scenes.、Yeah. I totally understand. There's um, um, in the. Bio says that he worked on One Punch Man episode one.、Mm-hmm. One Punch Man's huge in America. Everyone loves it, everyone celebrates it. Is there a specific key scene that we can look at that he specifically worked on in that first episode? Well, well, I think it's a good thing. <笑>僕はあまりその誰がここやったとかってあまり好きじゃないんですけど、うん、まあまあ僕がやったところはあれですね、うん、あの。So he's not into like like who did this cut or who did that kind. で女の子が泣いてて、うん、それ捕まってそれとこ助けて、うん、そいつどん殴ってバーンみたいな。So, but if you can recall、ね、the the cut that he did was when、uh, One Punch Man was saving a little girl, and then you know after that he punches this guy and this goes. Probably before that, so after the news comes out, and then you know, the one pound man puts on his cape around that, is like the start of the cut that he started doing back to the explosion scene.、Mm-hmm. はい。Been able to say anything fun or you know, like interesting.、So. It's fantastic. The, the people in America are going to love the, the <laughs> conversation. <laughs> yeah,、uh, and, and you know, I, I, I understand that he said you know, he doesn't like to pay attention to the cuts and, and all that. But earlier in the conversation,、mm-hmm. you, talk, uh, you mentioned that、uh, you re watched Ninja Scroll and there w a s like some scenes that, that you. You were proud of, or whatever, and, and I would、uh, be curious、mm-hmm. it, what those scenes would be in like Ninja Scroll,、mm-hmm. uh, Vampire Hunter D,、mm-hmm. uh, Animatrix, the things that、uh, mm-hmm. he can look back on and say, you know, those, those, are, those were the good ones. It's so much good to do, Ben, you can't stay well. I don't know, so you have to be. 最初の風作品だったっていうこともあって、はい、どっちかっていうとあの部分部分の、うん、あここいい表情出せたなとか、うん、特にズベは表情が割と。For Ninja School,、um, of course there were some scenes that he was proud of, especially for the ジュベイ's facial expression because his face changes a lot and has a lot of expression. Right. So how he changes his facial expression from one scene to another was something that he was proud of. But he was more appreciated to the people who worked on the other cuts、mm. and all the people that had the high quality art that、yeah. was done for those cuts, which he reminds and he appreciates again for their people's you know, like best work for Jiwei Ninpucho or、uh, Ninja Scroll.、Uh, absolutely. So, if you look back again at the total, there's like a lot of unbalanced scenes, especially for like the、uh, structures of the bodies, because it's not like in the same you know, like structure, like some、right. are like long, some are like short, and stuff、yes. like that. So, that's part of the things that as an animator he regrets because he couldn't take the balances. But if you cut, see from cut to cut, there are like well made scenes that are you know, like drawn very nicely or made very nicely, like maybe like Mushizo, the、uh, bug guy's、uh, face was drawn very good, like、right. stuff like that.、Uh, so,、um, from part to part, he's proud of. But if as a whole, sometimes he kind of like has、uh, regrets on things that he couldn't. Be like a good animator 
as a whole sometimes. That's natural. Mm -hmm. That's natural. There will always be things. Mm -hmm. uh, but in, there was some, some very interesting marks and stuff in, in Ninja Scroll. Like there was the one guy who who, who um, disappears in the shadow. Mm -hmm. And there's one scene where they actually use like deleter dot screens for the shadow. Mm -hmm. And I've never seen that in animation before. Sekai. Screen tone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the leader's right. Yeah, you just right. we've never seen that uh, so used in animation before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He discussed with Kajiri-san a lot about how to show it, and by using the dip tones, they were able to decrease the cuts a little bit for you know the in-between. That's cool. So yeah, it's not really moving. moving. Long no, it's not so moving. It's like, yeah, it's, it's just a long shot. Right, yeah. right. But yeah, still, it, with the dots of the, the leader, it makes it look like... Yeah. And then the and the beats. Long no right. Um, the oh, the beats were done. Are they done? Yeah, do ah. Digital. Are they all had? Then, then, now, cut. Are they blurred? They're not. But, then, they made another one. They made another one. So they used another deleter for the B scene. That's and, amazing. You know, like how they did it was, it, it looks like it's shaking, but it's just moving the deleter right. little oh, by little. That's amazing. That's, really, that's <laughs> how the, that's the really uh, cool. you know the the part director did a good job with that one. So that, that you know. That's it's incredible. It's not a lot about drawing, it's more about using the leader's zip to right. make it look like there's a lot of bees and moving. Another like very simple scene, too, that uh, I was just talking with my friend Lourdes about this. I told her we were going to be doing this convers mm. having this conversation, mm. and it was uh, the rock guy mm -hmm. is slowly, mm -hmm. uh, talk he's talking to Jubei mm -hmm. and slowly twirling his, mm -hmm. his weapon. Mm -hmm. And she brought up a good point, and, it, and I am curious, uh, is rotoscope ever used? In, in your work, in in the Madhouse work. Ano, rotoscope 的な技術を使ったことありますか？ジュベだけどの作品でもない。な、no rotoscope on anything. Yeah, that's that's so that's so cool because it's so fluid. And and the interesting thing about that scene is that there's like two speeds of animation happening at once. だからあの二つのスピードが一つのカット使われてるからそれがすごい。驚異的だっていうので、あの棒状のものを回すのって川尻さんの悟空で、主人公が尿意を回すんですよ。There's another Kajiri song that I mentioned called Goku based on Buster Sawa. It's another like the the cobra. The cobra dude, yeah. Yeah, but then there's a scene where he like spins the stick, but if you make the speed spin speed in the same timing, it doesn't look like it's in the same timing or the same speed. So they Reference that to Tessai or the rock guy, right? And that kind of made it look like you know it's in a different speed. Yeah, it's not a criticism. Mm -hmm. It's it's more like a oh, celebration. Oh, 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 oh. It's very cool looking. Mm -hmm. so, so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Or any reference rotoscope to so, the shoot, but uh, basically, most Japanese animation never uses. That's fair. That's super cool. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, we're 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 getting close close to to the end here, and we've been talking about works that uh, are you know 25, 30, 30 years old. Uh, what are, what are some of the um, more recent? Works that uh, that that you've participated in. So, 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 いろんなポイントポイントでそうですね。使用されてるって印象。でも本当に he's more like a spot animator right now. So you know like Freeling, you know the new animation that's on. He did work on that. He also did the new Samurai X. あその前だとまあ無限の全員とか。And Blade of the Immortal he did. Right. あとはネットフリックスのあれ手伝いましたけどな。えっと。Right. Yeah, he also worked on Yasuke, the Black Samurai. Right. Mm. Is it abrupt from one project to the next? Like one day you could be working on one series, and then the next day you're working on another, or are, could you even be working on two in the same day? Yeah, he can't like work on simultaneously on the same, yeah, you know, different animation on one day. So right, like, one day this will be for this, and the other will be that, you know, other anime. But he, basically, he has. Several projects working on at the same time. Yeah. But usually he only dedicates one animation per day. 
So uh, I kind of drew you some mention that in a Ninja Scroll, the bees are really hard to animate, and then also the fire scene. So I was curious about his experience and what the struggle was in animation for him. Mm, if there's a specific scene or mm. moment, something like that. Mm, the scene is mm. <laughs> 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 For him, the hairstyle was a big thing. Um, and you know, this hairstyle, of course, was an idea of Kajiri san. Mm -hmm. And when he saw the uh, rough design, he thought that this was a cool design. Right. So he wanted to keep that. But of course, he made the, like, the references for all people that he can use, but still, a lot of the animators could not kind of get the way to animate it, so he had to go back and check and redo it at some point. But for action, Kajiri san is a master of action. He also did some live action films as well, the right. director. Yeah. So, you know, like before they get into the final art, you know, the director checks all the you know, our works out for the animation, the keyframes and everything. Mm -hmm. And but those were all like checked and like uh, made some revisions by Kajiri san. Right. So it was kind of perfect when it went to uh, Minoa san's hands, so he didn't have to really redo or recheck or anything on the movements or the actions or anything. Right. But he had to do a lot of retakes on the uh, hairstyle <laughs> and how they show it and how they move it. Yeah, you know, it, make, it makes me uh, recall uh, there was an interview with Carl Barks, the, mm -hmm. the Donald Duck mm -hmm. uh, cartoonist. Mm -hmm. When he got work for Disney, one mm -hmm. of the assignments mm -hmm. in order to get a job with Disney mm -hmm. was you had to animate a waving flag. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that was like mm -hmm. the assignment. And I imagine the hair, right? Like you mm -hmm. can imagine the hair would probably mm -hmm. be, not, be not too different mm -hmm. uh, th than, than that sort of concept. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I do wonder though, uh, before we get out of here is, um, sort of going way, way back. Mm -hmm. I wonder what you, was in Yutaka's portfolio to just get his first works. Oh. Uh, Peter, Peter Chung said that when he got started in animation, mm -hmm. he had a, uh, like a 16 millimeter camera mm -hmm. at his house mm -hmm. that could do one frame at a time. Mm -hmm. And he would, he would draw mm -hmm. on a piece of paper, mm -hmm. had no hole punches. Mm -hmm. He would just kind of match up the corners uh, on another piece uh -huh. and then one, yeah, shot, so, at, one yeah, shot at a time. He made his own short animation. Exactly. And that you, was the portfolio yeah. for Peter Chan. Yeah. Did you, did Yutaka have that or was it uh, static drawings uh, that, that, that he presented to get his first works? I think he said that, you know, simply he was going to art school for animation. Okay. And then from that, he was able to get into the animation studio. So that's how he got his work. But of course, he was a big fan of Dizaki san's animation films. And also, he liked drawing a lot. So he kept on drawing, drawing, drawing. But the critical influence for him to become an animator was uh, the Galaxy X with 3 9 movie, the first movie. Right. That was。スタジオ he did have a, a lot of croquis or like the sketchbooks and right, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. and drawings from yeah. like Max to a lot of guys, a lot more guys, yeah. a lot more guys. You know, he drew a lot of that and showed that like a pile of uh, sketches from the younger days to the recent ones mm -hmm. to the studios and showed that maybe that could be like a portfolio. Yeah, that's amazing. Like, I mean, you mentioned the Galaxy flick, you know, it's Leiji Matsumoto, right? Yes, like, Leiji Matsumoto. And, and Leiji Matsumoto, like the face proportions are kind of long, <laughs> like just, just like... Uh, the movie version is more like, yeah. Yeah. Like, like, but I'm saying Jubei has the, like, a lot of those characters have those Leiji Matsumoto kind of stretch faces and stuff. Mm -hmm. 
まあ、まあ、顔の映像とかもあるんですかねっていうのは、ね、<笑>まあまあでもなんともそこら辺は映画版も全然松本先生でとは違うし<笑>いやいやあの80年代アニメ業界の80年代って割とね顎が長いみたいなうそういうなんか時代があったんですよ<笑>それをね引きずってるんだろう There were a lot of people who drew with longer faces and a longer chin、right. There was like a trend、so、Yeah He said that he still has a You know, our style. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's been like that from the 80s. Yeah, that's cool. I got to go to the end Most nicest person in the world to me. So、yes. I'm really happy that I, you know, I hope people will you know, get the feeling of how a great guy this person is. A- absolutely,、mm-hmm. absolutely. The audience is going to love it. Arigato gozaimasu. k f a v o r s like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell so that we can let you know what new videos are、uh, available. We are a daily YouTube channel with more than 1,500 videos in our filmography, and there's a good chance we talked about some of your favorite comics. I encourage you to hit the magnifying glass on the front page of the Kayfabe YouTube channel. Search for your favorite titles and、uh, check out those episodes. If by chance we did not talk about your favorite comics on the channel yet, you have to let us know. Do, the, do so in the comments. Let us know what those comics are and we will push those comics a little bit higher on our to read pile. Jimmy and I are going to be at Big Apple Comic Con、uh, come December 16th. It's been years since we've been to the Big Apple, and、uh, we look forward to seeing you guys. So, so please come through and bring your comics that we have yet to sign. We have a Patreon, and on the Cartoonist k f a b e Patreon,、uh, the King k f a b e r s get all the videos before anybody else. And、uh, w- when the internet cooperates, they are hanging out with us in a live stream recording session. As we、uh, make these episodes, mitigates the kayfabe effect. Ultimately, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make. And before you is a pretty good sample of our bibliography, but we'll get into the nitty gritty. Jimmy, let the people know what you got coming out soon. My next release is Street Angel Princess of Poverty from Image Comics. This will be out in late November in time for their holiday gift. For the、uh, action comic, superhero comic lover in your life. And Street Angel Princess of Poverty collects all the Street Angel comics that are not in Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive, also available from Image. And、uh, get both books, it'll complete your collection. I have been self publishing lately. True Crime Funnies number one is available on jimrug.com, along with BW and 1986 Zine. And if they are sold out there, you can still read them on patreon.com slash jimrug. And my contribution to the grand design history is the Hulk, which is available in limited quantities because it is sold out at the、uh, distribution level. So if you haven't added Hulk grand design to your collection yet, you need to pick that up next time you hit the comic shop. Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is my big one for 2023, and、uh, it is going fast. Man, there's more than、uh, probably 75% of this print run is gone, and stores have been re upping. It was the number one reordered book on, on Comicron. Uh, so, thank you guys so much. Thanks to the stores for,、uh, for supporting the book. But if you even have any thought that, you're, that you want this or you want to get it as a gift, make sure you scoop it up、uh, right away.、Uh, it's the best book I've made to date 500 plus pages, 10 year anniversary Hip Hop Family Tree, 50th anniversary of the culture. Scoop it up.、Uh, not the last holiday release I'm going to have. Uh, coming November 14th is the X Men Grand Design trade paperback, collecting all of my X Men Grand Design works.、Uh, a couple volumes of that, that is out of print、uh, as we speak, so make sure、uh, if you are missing out on your、uh, X Men Grand Design, scoop that up, you'll get it all in one. And there is a trilogy of horror comics that I have made under the Red Room umbrella, Anti Social Network, Trigger Warnings, and coming in January. Is this trade paperback right here called Crypto Killers, which、uh, collects my 2023 season of Red Room comics with a bunch of extras? The books are the most important part of keeping cartoonist kayfabe solvent and、uh, functional. But there are some other ways to support the channel. Jimmy, let the people know. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also pick up Cartoonist Kayfabe t shirts, merchandise, mugs, stickers, and more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. All good ways to support the channel. Give them those final merchandise, Jimmy, and we'll be on our way. Read more comics.